All right, let's look at this zero day vulnerability on Windows, which has to do with the creation of new windows. So the background on the zero day is that in December of 2020, DB App Security found a zero day attack in the wild, which they attributed to the advanced persistent threat group called Bitter APT. Bitter APT is suspected of being an Indian state sponsored actor because they target places that someone like India might want to target, such as China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Saudi Arabia. Microsoft patched this vulnerability in February of 2021, and then a variant of the vulnerability was subsequently found, not sure by who, and that was patched in January of 2022. So the background for this vulnerability is that for performance reasons, Microsoft moved the Windows operating systems, Windows handling and other graphics handling into kernel space. And it's handled by a component that used to be called win32k.sys and is now win32kpool.sys. So that's a separate kernel driver and it actually exposes more attack surface than just the main operating system kernel itself. And consequently, it has been the source of many, many vulnerabilities. But what's interesting about this component is that although it runs in the kernel, they actually took some of the work and they execute it back in user space. So there's a mechanism where Win32K will call a callback that goes back from kernel space into user space, which is sort of the opposite direction of what we would normally expect for things like system calls. So it's kind of like a reverse system call back to user space. So the intended usage for something like that is that if we had a sequence diagram here and time is going down, you had some application, it might call a function like create window X, and that'll call another function like XXX create window X in the kernel space. That function inside of kernel space may ultimately work its way towards something where it says, okay, I need to call back to user space. So I'm going to call this xxx client alloc window class extra bytes, and that's going to call back to user space. And so in this particular case, it's because they expect some extra data to be present based on just whatever the arguments and types were that were passed to this create function. It creates a window. The window is going to expect that there's some extra data. If that is non-zero extra data, then it calls back to user space. The normal flow then is that user space should allocate some bytes on the user space heap and then return a pointer to those bytes back to kernel space. And subsequently, kernel space will take that pointer and just assign it to this particular data struct that holds the extra bytes. So that's the way it's supposed to work, but some extra background here is that there is a data structure called the PEB on Windows, the process environment block. And this holds a whole bunch of information about a given process. But for our purposes, what we're going to care about is that there's a kernel callback table pointer inside of that. And that's going to point at some struct. The struct is going to have a whole bunch of different functions. And these, you know, this is not going to be the real name, but I just plugged it in from some quickly found references. But there's going to be a whole bunch of functions that are used when there is operations taking place on a window, for instance, through this graphical user windows handling. And so specifically, what we care about is the fact that that XXX client alloc window class extra bytes function exists in this function pointer table, but it turns out that that table can be manipulated by an attacker in user space. So if instead we have a malicious application, their first step is that they can go ahead and replace this XXX client alloc windows class extra bytes in the kernel callback table in the PEB with a pointer to an attacker controlled function. So now this alternative, you can think of it as a hooked or just a completely replaced XXX client alloc window class extra bytes. It's not actually need to be in user 32.dll. It's just going to be somewhere else, but I'm putting it here. So the sequence diagram looks the right. They just create a completely different version of that and then they call through. And now all of a sudden when kernel space calls back to user space, the attacker can do anything they want and then subsequently they can return a malicious attacker controlled pointer to the bytes like notionally it's supposed to be a pointer to some user space allocation but the attacker can return an arbitrary value there and that arbitrary value will be stuck into the struct where it would have went anyways so now we need to learn a little bit about that struct so there is a struct called tag window 
or I'm just going to call it tag wind probably frequently. I might use them interchangeably. And although this is an undocumented structure, it's been thoroughly reverse engineered because it's come into play in all sorts of different vulnerabilities and exploits over the years. So I just grabbed this picture from one of the references, and these are all of the various fields that are going to be relevant to this particular set of exploits. And so while there is a tag wind, which we will consider the enclosing data structure, most of the time throughout this, we're going to be looking at this enclosing tag wind K, and this is sort of the kernel side of view of this structure, containing some information that is only visible to kernel, but some of it will be copied back and sanitized into user space. And then there's other stuff that, you know, is only available to the kernel. So what is known about this tag wind structure is that if tag wind of tag wind K of DW extra flag, so if this flag bit field has the hex 800 bit set, and that would be bit 11. If this bit is set, then this other field, the P extra bytes field, holds an offset within kernel space heap. So basically it's going to say, here's some offset to find some allocation for extra bytes in kernel space. If this flag is not set, as would be the case in this default invocation that we just showed in the sequence diagram, if it's not set, then instead p extra bytes holds a pointer to that user space allocation. But this is the type confusion vulnerability section. And so what is interesting here is that this p extra bytes can hold two completely different types. One of them is a pointer to user space, one is an offset into a kernel space heap. So what that looks like is that, you know, if this is our data structure and this is the tag wind k subcomponent of it, if p extra bytes is of type pointer, then, you know, for instance, there was an allocation saying, hey, I need 100 extra bytes. And then the extra bytes would be allocated in user space. So on this side of the user space kernel space. So user space would allocate 100 bytes and it would pass back a pointer to those 100 bytes in the p extra bytes field. On the other hand, if the type is set to offset, then this flag would have to be set at some point to indicate that this p extra bytes should be interpreted as an offset. So this dw extra flag would get this hex 800 bit flag set, you know, with an or for instance. But then instead of being a pointer out to user space, there would be an allocation in kernel space, in the kernel space heap, an allocation of hex 100 bytes, and then this p extra bytes would be set to an offset whatever that offset is from the base of the kernel heap. So in this case, I've shown it as hex 600. Could be anything, but that's just gonna be a placeholder value for us. So now I basically am gonna have you do the find the flaw in a little bit different way this time, because it's it would I felt it was a little bit too complicated, but I feel like I've simplified it down enough that it is actually tractable now. So this is gonna be your paint by numbers version. So you've gotta figure out function one, two, and three. I'm gonna give you some pseudocode on the website. You're gonna figure out you know, which function's called in which order in the context of this sequence diagram where we've got a completely attacker controlled function that's getting called back to. What functions in what order would lead to a potential type confusion vulnerability? So again, go to the website, look at the pseudocode and you wanna figure out what function called first, followed by another function, followed by a third function, would lead to a type confusion vulnerability. All right, go give it a try.